Okay, welcome everybody. I am here with Christina Hamilton, and she is an approved clinical supervisor that provides supervision online for clinicians in uh, Virginia who are working towards their licensure. So if you are a clinician in Virginia and you're trying to get your clinical supervision hours uh, to become fully licensed and you don't really, you're not really finding a fit uh, in your area, you can look for a clinical supervisor that could work with you online as um, Christina Hamilton does. So Christina Hamilton is a licensed professional counselor in Virginia and also North Carolina. Um, she's also a, a public personnel licensed uh, professional, uh, which has to do with school counseling. And she also provides counseling in, in uh, private practice for individuals, families, and groups, um, which uh, she'll begin also doing online. And you can find Christina's details and her contact information, her website, in the details section of this video. So please um, look her up, and especially if you're seeking services. So the purpose of this is to help you understand what online clinical supervision is like when it's a fit, when it may not be a fit, what are the challenges, what are the benefits, and how does that actually happen? So Christina Hamilton is someone that actually does it. Um, she is, like I said, an approved clinical supervisor through the National Board of um, uh, Clinical Super, uh, National Board of Certified Counselors. Um, so Christina, if you could tell us a little bit about what you provide and, uh, and then we'll kind of go from there with some questions. Sure. I started doing clinical supervision online out of necessity. I love the company that I was working with and knew that I was going to move to a different state. And so after collaboration with my supervisor, we decided, let's try something new. Um, and so at first, I was very hesitant about it. Mm -hmm. um, not knowing if I had the skills to be able to, um, you know, work the technology uh, to do that. But I have found it to be very rewarding for myself as a clinical supervisor, as well as the residents that I supervise. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I think a lot of clinicians, I think that's probably the most um, stumbling block for clinicians and supervisors to get started is just not feeling comfortable, just not sure, like, how is that going to work? Am I, able gonna, am I gonna be able to do it? Uh, what if there's a technology failure and I don't know how to figure it out? Um, but it seems like after getting your feet wet uh, and, and getting some comfort just simply by doing it, uh, you became comfortable and, and actually found it rewarding along with your uh, supervisees. Absolutely. I think we have a preconceived idea that we can't express feelings uh -huh. or read feelings as well over the internet. And I found uh -huh. that that just was not true, uh -huh. that we were able to bond um, in our relationship over the internet and we were able to um, even um, look at videos of our clients and I do a lot of interpersonal process recall so was able to stop the videos I've done live supervision uh, with clinicians who were doing uh, counseling in Virginia uh -huh. and it it's I have found it very successful um, and being able to, to talk with clinicians and um, monitor work that they're doing with our clients. Oh, okay. So the videos, is it, it's videos of their sessions with clients and mm -hmm. then you review them with them? Yes. And we stop, start, stop, start to, oh. um, you know, process what was happening with the clinician during those moments, oh. the stressful moments with clients. But yeah. also I've used it to observe what they're doing right there live in session with their wow. clients as well. Yeah, so we, wow. We have permission from our, our clients and parents as well to do that. Yeah, so they're getting like, I mean, they're getting the uh, the most uh, true, raw, you know, feedback um, because, you know, everyone wants to look good to their clinical supervisor, right? So they'll, yes. <laughs> so they'll try to yes. things and put it in their perspective, right? 
Mm -hmm. um, but you're yeah. seeing the real deal, how they're really mm -hmm. working with um, clients. And, and I'm sure that's anxiety provoking for them at first, um, but the benefit uh, is, is so great. Um, when I was doing training as a um, chaplain in hospitals, I did clinical pastoral education, and we did a lot of that. And, uh, oh, it's just incredible. It was, it was so much better uh, to me anyway um, than the supervision I got as a counselor because we didn't do that. We didn't do that live stuff and recordings. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Well, uh, and the, the feedback I've received is that mm -hmm. their interactions with clients when they videotape has actually decreased because they get so used to meeting with me online. Oh. And Showing the videos, but also that air interactions are primarily through um, through the internet. That it they feel more comfortable then with their clients, even with videotaping them. Oh, I see. Yeah, interesting. Yep, it's a, it's about developing that uh, comfort level. And the real learning occurs when we stop showing our best tapes and start showing yes. our real work with our clinical supervisors. What we struggle with so we can get help with what we struggle with. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and I think, too, the benefit of this is that even when I lived in Virginia, there were days that I would visit five sites uh -huh. to meet with clinicians. And working with their schedule was very difficult at times. Oh, yeah. um, there are always emergencies when it comes to our field. Mm -hmm. So being able to do clinical supervision online has been helpful because I can do it at different times. I can meet them without having to drive to different sites. So oh, yeah. in some ways, they get more supervision now than they got when I worked um, with them on site in Virginia on location. You know what's interesting about that is most clinical supervision, I would assume, is not done on site. But the, the, the clinician, I mean, at least that's how I did it. I, you know, I had a clinical site, but I would travel to go see my clinical supervisor. Um, so she never even saw, never saw my clinical site. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a parallel process between doing counseling online and doing supervision online, uh, many parallel processes. Uh, when I do online counseling, I actually see people's homes and see their environment, which I never would have had a sense of if, if they just came to my office. And same thing with the video, the online supervision, you're actually seeing their clinical site. You were doing that anyway, but you know, a lot of clinical supervisors don't. Um, I mean, because they're not going to go drive all over the place. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. uh, who has time, right? right, who has time? right. I, you know, and I was very lucky that I had, well, I had wonderful clinical supervisors, uh -huh. but I, I had one who would go every three months before she completed my quarterly uh -huh. to observe me live or participate in the counseling session with me. Oh, okay. And so I think that modeling helped me to be, see the importance of that. Um, when I could drive around, but I think even when, with clinical supervision, I've seen that at times I'm meeting with residents when, when they're finished with their day and they're at home. So I also see that process of how is it that you calm yourself down? How do you deal with stress at the end of a, a difficult day? And yeah. So I get to see that too um, because they're at home. Right, yes. Yeah, because self care, like the health and good, you know, health and wellness of the clinician themselves, that balance and everything is uh, so important. And you actually see what the clinic, you get more of a sense of what the clinician is as a whole person rather than compartmentalized, you know, uh, in their clinical work. Um, yeah, that's really neat. I haven't thought about those things. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, something that comes to my mind is, uh, is the rules and regulations in Virginia for providing um, or for receiving clinical supervision? Um, I'm because I'm curious now. Does Virginia require that you actually see their clinical work in action, or have recordings, or verbatims, or anything like that? What What are the rules and regulations around that in Virginia? Yes, we are required to use, whether it's videotaping or um, be there live in session with them. Uh -huh. And we're also required to know them before we start supervision. 
So we meet beforehand Mm -hmm. um, before we start doing supervision online. Okay. And that wasn't a problem when I was with the agency full time instead of a contracted clinical supervisor because I already knew the people there. Um, However, now because I'm getting more referrals from Virginia, I do drive there and meet with them before we start doing clinical supervision online. Right, right. Yeah, I would love to talk to the creators of that rule um, because it is restricting access to good clinical supervision. Um, so there's cer- there certainly is a drawback. The benefit I'm not aware of, uh, what the benefit is from meeting someone in the same location before offering the online clinical supervision. I think there's this, and again, I think sometimes uh, maybe the, those that are developing the rules, and reg- that, like a rule and regulation kind of like that, Um, maybe aren't comfortable with online work themselves. I think sometimes that discomfort uh, leads to kind of weird rules and regulations that may not actually be helpful. Maybe there's something about it that's like really necessary that I'm aware of, but I don't, I I can't think of one. Um, uh, So, but I I think it's, it's really great that they actually want you to see the clinical work um, either through recordings uh, or actually when it's in process. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so let's see here. And how many of those hours have to be actual like recordings or seeing their uh, practical experience? It's my understanding that the 200 hours just need to be with a licensed professional counselor and that there aren't stipulations about how many hours that that would need to be um, face-to-face in a live location versus face-to-face online oh okay okay all right yeah in terms of you mean you don't know how many of the clinical supervision hours have to be in the same location versus online no i don't it's my assumption that it's the 200 hours as long as it's with an lpc i see okay all right fantastic um and you do you also provide group clinical supervision i have done group clinical supervision in the past, but I prefer doing individual supervision, and that just seems to be what is requested of me most often to do the individual. Okay. Well, they certainly get that individual attention, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Um, you know, we can learn from other people's experience, but uh, probably what we're really struggling with is is what's most important. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay. And. Uh, so what have you found beneficial from working online and what, what have been some of the challenges or difficulties that you've had to work around or that continue to be challenges if there are any? I, I have found that the agency where I contract in Virginia is in a very rural area. Uh-huh. And earlier when I talked about driving to five different locations, it's because the county is so large. Mm-hmm. So for, cl- for clinicians that have to drive 45 minutes. I know for myself, I used to drive for about an hour and a half one way to get clinical supervision. Oh, wow. Uh, this is, this is the way, I mean, you, that's commitment. It really yeah, is. Commitment. Um, and that's after work. So, oh, yes. you know, I think that just being in a rural area is so difficult for clinicians. Many already feel that they don't have the exposure to what others are doing in the field. And so this is a great way, I think, for them to be able to get the clinical supervision that they need and also not feel so isolated. Uh Um, I think that a lot of the roadblocks that I had in doing clinical supervision online were really all in my my mind. It was my need to feel comfortable and feel like I was bonding and being able to use some of the techniques that I think are important in supervision um, it, I thought at first I wasn't going to be able to do that. And so I think that anything that was negative was really about my perception of it and not what actually occurred. Yeah. Um, I, right. I was recently at a convention in February here in North Carolina for counselors and learned about some new techniques that in for supervision using uh, some of the play therapy figures that we already use 
in our work with um, our clients. And so at first I wondered how I could use these techniques online and um, I found that after I got over my initial anxiety, I was able to use those things successfully. Yeah, that's right. You And you did the full uh, DCC training. I did. I did. I've done your telehealth for clients. Right. And I've also, I'm working on the tele supervision um, that you offer. Oh, perfect. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So um, for listeners, she took the full uh, two day, the two day course to get credentialed as a distance uh, counselor uh, through the Center of Credentialing and Education. And my institute's one of the uh, approved providers for that. So we offered that uh, during the North Carolina convention. And, um, and I'm so glad that you're taking our telesupervision course. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd love your feedback on that uh, when you finish the course. I'm, I'm proud of that course. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and so- I appreciate yeah. your handbooks too. Ah, okay. your, both of your handbooks I've purchased and are very helpful. Um, I've learned a lot. Oh, that's great. Glad to hear that. Um, okay. Yep. So, and what are some of the tools that you do use in clinical supervision and how do you, how do you use them online? Mm -hmm. Screen share is very important for me in supervision. I frequently have resources from one supervision session to the next uh -huh. that I, I want to, that I gather and I want to share. So I think using the screen share is very helpful for me to come through my own handbook sometimes that I use with residents as well as just pulling as many resources as I can to support them in their work with clients. Uh -huh. And um, do you find yourself more available or are there boundary concerns in terms of your availability since you're online or you know how do the, how do they contact you uh i have not had anything any negative experiences with that um the clinicians that i work with know how to contact me and that unless there is an emergency that they really need to um, contact me that they go through their agency's supervisor oh okay Absolutely. And I also, they know that I collaborate for the three, the three month quarterly review with their supervisor on site oh. so that we can talk about their progress or any other issues that we might have. So the, the boundaries I think are in place just as well as they would be if we were doing regular supervision um, that was not online. Oh, that's, that's a really um, helpful way of doing monitoring. Mm -hmm. It and, is. So, and you mentioned monitoring in the beginning, monitoring their clinical work. How is it that you monitor their clinical work? I, I monitor their clinical work in several different ways. The first is that they share their videos of their work. And uh -huh. so being able to, to see that, even if it wasn't in real time, and then also I do live supervision real time. And then I've, I've also traveled there and participated in their groups. Oh, okay. So that I'm actually either observing or um, helping them on it live. I see. And what about charting? Do you, do you monitor charting at all? I, I do monitor charting. However, I have stopped monitoring charting just very recently and only do collaboration with their immediate supervisor on site. Okay, because they're looking at the charting and then you get feedback yes. from them? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, there's ways to, um, you know, if, uh, as I'm sure you're aware of, but listeners may not be aware of, on practice management programs, uh, electronic health record systems, the, the clinical supervisor could be given access to look at the charting um, to provide the supervision needed on charting and documentation for the supervisee. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, an added benefit of the use of technology with, with clinical supervision. Okay, excellent. And one other thing, um, do you have specialties? Uh, like if, if, you know, what are the specialties that if, if a supervisee, clinician working on their hours is looking for a supervisor for particular, you know, um, niches, what, what would they seek you out for in terms of your specialties? Most of my work is around trauma. Okay. And so, 
for clinicians who are working with clients who have had traumatic experiences, and that can be from sexual abuse to physical abuse, mm -hmm. um, very frequently domestic violence, um, those are the areas that I have the most experience with, with not just clients, but also doing supervision with clinicians who frequently have vicarious trauma from their own experiences with clients who are sometimes violent and aggressive or who are reacting, um, uh, acting out with reactive sexualized behaviors. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so if anyone's working with those populations, mm -hmm. you would certainly be the fit. And that's a really hard, that, that, is, that is kind of a, you, a real, it's a real specialty and it might be hard to find a clinical supervisor that really uh, specializes in that. And, you know, as a clinical supervisor, you're only supposed to supervise within your own boundaries of competence. Mm -hmm. So if it's outside your boundaries of competence, you're not supposed to supervise on that. So if a clinician's working in that area, uh, they're really going to need um, a clinical supervisor such as yourself. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank, is there anything else that uh, we should touch upon? I think, we, I think we covered everything. All right, excellent. Um, so this is Christina Hamilton. And again, if you're looking for clinical supervision hours in Virginia, uh, please seek her out and you can find her details um, underneath this video in the details section. And thanks a lot, uh, thanks a lot again, Christina. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.